Hello everybody, welcome to the second session of easy website creation using free themes. Uh, in the previous session we learned that creating a website is pretty easy. We also learned that there are several free themes that we can use to create these websites and we need to absolutely have no understanding of programming to create a website. In this session we are going to we are going to create a website and I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of of creating a website and <coughs> for the purpose of uh, demonstration I'll use the website which I've created and um, I will walk walk you through various themes that are available I'll talk to you about plugins uh, I will also talk to you about uh, various CMS systems which are available uh, we will also talk in the end about finding out the performance of your website and even finding out who is actually coming and visiting your website so that's some bit of uh, website demographics so with uh, without further ado let me jump into uh, our topics so I'm assuming we've covered the first two parts of our topics which is to buy a domain and as I mentioned earlier you can buy domain from any of the top players so you have domain you know available in GoDaddy uh, you have host cater you have bluehost I don't know there, there are so many of them you know and as I was mentioning to you always go with the top top one two or three because they would typically provide better after sales service even though it might seem a little more expensive at the beginning so I assume that you bought your hosting and your domain and now you're ready to launch your CMS system so once you have bought your domain it is very important that you launch a CMS system into it and we will spend some time understanding what is a CMS system so every website has a frameworks so if I, if I look at my website it would have a framework and that framework would be either uh, you know WordPress or Joomla or Drupal or Magento or one of these framework or you might you know if you're a proper programmer you might you know create a website bottoms up you know using HTML and CSS but most of us today use a framework because it is much more easy to customize a framework there is hardly any programming required uh, to customize so it's it's much more convenient to have a framework and that framework in in this case is going to be WordPress because I think WordPress is one of the easiest CMS or content management system and uh, it is obviously the most famous and the most used WordPress <coughs> content management system you also have other content management system as I was mentioning earlier like you have Magento you have Joomla, Joomla I'm sorry you have Joomla it's not G U it's J O O O <coughs> and you have Drupal uh, Magento is supposed to be more focused on the e-commerce world and Joomla is somewhere between Drupal and WordPress in terms of its ability to um, use the programming languages so you have to do a bit of programming in Joomla uh, it also uses concepts of, of object-oriented programming in it and it also uh, is supposed to have a very robust system but it is not easy to install especially for somebody who is not aware of technology as much as you know a technologist but you know if you're just a casual technology user you will not be very comfortable using Joomla and you can definitely forget about Drupal because it's most complex CMS of the lot that we mentioned now if we <coughs> if we go to create a WordPress if you uh, if you go to create a word WordPress uh, CMS in our website what we have to do is go to the control panel so control panel is a panel that every time every uh, domain provider would have and this would basically be yeah, basically be the panel which will help you download all the stuff in your website so this is the control panel for host cater and uh, yeah it looks a little 
complex in the in the first place so there's a lot of things here you got mail SEO files logs so we'll forget about all of these because we are not concerned about any of these our focus needs to be in one of these software services buttons so either you can use the software class button and go and download WordPress or you can go down here where you have the software close app installer and you see WordPress here you have WordPress Joomla uh, Abbey card and so on and so forth so I would just use one of these so let me just click here and see what happens and voila we see WordPress we see Joomla Magento all of the things that we spoke about right here so it's very easy as I said all you need to do is go ahead and install WordPress if you click install you you are you know I'd invite invited by this this particular screen which <coughs> tells you that your WordPress is going to get installed in the domain that you've chosen for this particular domain if you have more than one domain you can choose the other domains as well uh, and it will also tell you the directory where it is going to install WordPress uh, so in this case it's going to be the WordPress directory is going to create a WP subdirectory and uh, it is also going to say that the site name is going to be my blog you can change the site settings if you want you can change the names uh, this these are not really very important so you can leave it at the same stuff as well and you have the admin user so you can change the admin password if you want to for your WordPress account so here you can do that you can also do it later and uh, you can select the language that you want your WordPress to install in and uh, just go in and click install and that's it you know it's very simple the WordPress simply installs right into your um, you know hosting site and once it is installed uh, all you need to do is basically use the the customize option in WordPress and create various pages and you know run with it so let me go back to my <coughs> site and you will not see something like this when you first install you will see a blank page and what you need to do what you need to see is basically you need to look at this particular top half of the page if you can see here there is a dashboard there is a theme widget menu all of this and you also have customize option I will will come to customize later but let's just go here into themes and click dashboard so if I click dashboard <coughs> it opens another page and this is your control panel this is how your control panel should look like once WordPress is installed in your system and uh, you can you can also log out you can also edit your profile so if you want to change your password all of that can be done here uh, so this is the admin area now let's just just go through each of these so you have basically you've got posts you've got media you've got pages you have comments you have contacts you have contact forms you have appearances you have various plugins you could have multiple users you could have tools you have settings and you have collapse menu option and for our purpose we are going to be primarily working we, we're going to be primarily focusing on the pages the contact option appearance option and the plugin option and I will speak to you about each of this in detail so let me just go and see where have we reached so we have installed CMS we have installed WordPress and now we are in the customized website stage so let's just go and um, understand what is customization of our website uh, but before we even get into customization let's understand what what is a theme and we need to understand this particular aspect before customization so I'll just move this below okay so a theme is basically a skin which is sitting on top of your WordPress 
uh, CMS system and it, it provides a bit of a <coughs> look and feel it sort of arranges your data, data in a fashion which will uh, make it more user friendly for you to you to operate and also for somebody who's seeing the website you know because a WordPress pure static website is it's really very boring it's not it's not pleasing to the eye uh, but what a theme does is a theme basically sits on top of it and creates a kind of a nicer looking page so let me explain what would a website without a theme look like and with a theme look like so let's look at the pages so I have created several pages here and assuming that I had to create one more page and I will not themeify this I'll simply write contact and I'll write something some gibberish and I will say let's look at this page let's right click and look at this page now see what you see you see basically everything that is there in my website but you see it in a very bland fashion you have you have a white page you have no pictures it's not organized in a nice fashion so it's not nice so what theme does is that it sits on top of WordPress and it manages the look and feel of WordPress for you to you to find it nice to operate and of course for the user who comes and sees also it's pleasing to the eye so that's what a theme does I'm simply going to discard this particular page so if it says leave the page I'm going to leave it I'm not going to save this so <coughs> we spoke about theme so let's let's understand what themes are available for us so if you go to appearances you can see a bunch of themes which are available and um, there are several great themes which are absolutely free and you can download these themes from the net these themes from the net and the one I'm right now using is called parallax one it's absolutely free there are premium versions and there are versions where which will uh, which will cost you money as well uh, so you know if you really want to develop a website which is extremely customizable go for it but for all basic purposes it it's good enough to just download a free theme and use it WordPress comes pre-installed with some themes like this particular one where you say 2015 or this one 2014 or 2016 but you know as you would see if I just open a live preview of this particular theme you would realize that it's, it's nothing great there's nothing great about this particular theme so unlike this particular theme so if you were to see this theme it will look really really awesome so what you got to do is you got to shortlist a particular theme and you can go and shortlist the theme you know on the net so let's just say which are the top WordPress themes which are for free and let's just click on this particular one so here we go so you got a bunch of themes which are absolutely free and uh, you, you also have a demo option here so it's up to you if you like a particular theme if it sort of gels with your idea of your website go for it if it doesn't you know you can choose other themes as well these are all free look at the price it's zero dollars there's no money here but yes there are some premium options within this theme which you can upgrade to and you'll have to pay money for that um, <coughs> and see if you, if you look at it it says features like responsive responsive structure responsive is nothing but you know the ability of your theme to reduce its size and increase and you know the picture is still remaining the same parallax parallax effect custom logos icons menus multiple schemes color schemes social icons google map integration blah 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 uh, zerif light is another easy to use theme it's a very popular one sydney is another popular theme you know a lot of sites run on this you can keep browsing for your theme so without 
without just getting stuck with the theme because I let you be the best judge of the theme I would jump into talking more about how you how would you install a theme so what you do is once if you want to add a new theme go to themes menu here appearances go to themes and in themes menu go to add new and click add new so you should be given an option to search themes and here you can simply type the theme that you want to so let's say be like Zerif Life, Zerif Light and I type Zerif Light and um, it should come through so it's here yeah, you can see a preview of the Zerif Light and you can see what it does so if it sort of <coughs> gels with your thought process go ahead and install Zerif Light. it's a very good theme no doubt about it um, so my theme was as I mentioned was parallax one because I thought that was better for me I sort of resonated with me and uh, I basically went ahead and installed the theme so what happens is once you install a theme you are able to then customize the theme so what you first see here is basically a plain page and then you go to customize option and you basically can change everything that is available in this theme so if I want to change this particular logo I can change it and I will cover logo in our later session because logo is something which is important to your website you can add pages you can delete pages so by default this particular parallax uh, one theme comes uh, as a one page website so what you see here is what it comes with so you can add a call to action button it comes with a call to action button you know there is an option to add your client names you can talk about your services you can add service icons here you can talk about yourself you can add a picture if you want to you can talk about the team you can talk about customer testimonials you know all of this you can simply add without much trouble uh, of course you'll have to write the text here about what what your customers actually say so that's something that you'll have to do but the format the template is there for you to use you can also add and this is what I've done is you can additionally add some sub pages like these are pages within my website um, because my what I wanted my users to have a richer experience and there's a lot of other stuff which I cannot cover in one page so I wanted to cover them I will tell you how to install how to sort of add these things but generally when a theme comes you would not see this particular panel this will be empty um, but let's just go ahead and change something in the theme so this particular section is called the header section and let's say I want to change something in the header section I want to change the background image so I can add an image if I click the new image pops in it sort of clicks in here I can browse an image from my website you know there are several images which you can choose from the media library or you can upload it from your laptop so if you got images in your kitty go ahead and do that or you you can download it from the internet save it and then you know add it here so I really like this particular picture so let it be and <coughs> you can also change the text which is here so if I click the back button and if if I go to the the content section it helps me change so this is the main title you know it's, it's very intuitive you can just play around with it it tells you how to change each of these things so if I add something you know it keeps getting added it's all up to me you know 
I can add delete what I want to I can have a subsection a subtitle all of that's available and you know I can even change the no more button I can say something else here what I want to and I can link this particular button to something within my page so if I want the user to go to let's say customer testimonials then I can do that as well there is a customizable link available and if I want my user to go to a different page altogether I can do that as well so in this particular um, you know uh, section I I want the user to go to my services page and particularly in the ship building page so if I if the user clicks here he will go to this particular ship building page you can either navigate through that particular option or you can navigate from the services page as well so let's just go back we will leave this page without saving it so that was the customizable options it's it's very 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 intuitive my only suggestion would be when you are downloading pictures please try to have the same breadth and length of the picture so example if you download this particular icon from the web this you would be able to check the image size and you would know that it's basically 300 pixel by 300 pixel and you can have another picture by 300 pixel by 400 pixel but it will the alignments will go out of whack so this might be longer this might be a little shorter it might not look as professional as you would want it to look so please download pictures of the same size and it's very easy to download you know you pretty much can go to Google type let's say ships icon and I've got this host of icons available you can also create these icons and I'll take you through this later but if you go to the image gallery of Google you got so many of them but as I said you have to ensure that when you save this image just have the image um, not in portable graphics probably in JPEG format or if you can have it in the same size so we will cancel this and we will go back uh, if it's always good to download images or, or post images which are genuine and which have been taken on the site so for example this particular image is not taken from the web it, it is a on-site image and you know that provides sort of uh, authenticity to the website all these images so some of these images are taken from the website so if it's a very generic page and I want to just explain what you know the the various vessels to I can probably download it but if I want to go into specific area of my website you know for example if I want to talk about the hull specialization it's better that I choose an image which is original authentic because it tells the user that you know it's not a fake website okay so now we will move on from themes and we will cover something called as plugins so we have covered themes we've covered customizing the website now let's cover plugins plugins are <coughs> nothing but they're basically they're, they're like apps in your mobile phone you know so they do something which is a little difficult for you to do otherwise they make the task easier so let me give you an example okay so I've got this contact page here and when I click on the contact page you see that you have a contact icon there is an icon there is a small text here you would have a, a box where you can write your name you have a box where you can write your email address subject your message everything and then if you click it goes to that particular email ID that you want to send it to now this particular page I could have created it you know to create this page I would have to write uh, a text of this nature and then I'll have to write you know I have to write some amount of HTML to create this particular text but if I add a plugin I don't have to do any of that I simply can just 
download the plugin and add the plugin to my page and it does everything else for me so some plugins do you know things like they make your website attractive you know you can add a few things here or there some plugins on the other end make your task of customization easier so what do I mean by that so there is a plugin and we will go into plugins now uh, there is a plugin which is called visual editor okay and it comes along with this particular plugin black studio tiny mce widget and you see this particular plugin action this adds a visual editor now what is the significance of visual editor well if you go to your pages and you click on let's say an next page and you want to edit this page if you have a visual editor it is very easy for you to add a picture to add text blah 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 versus not having visual editor so if I just say add a row and say insert so it's added a new row now I want to write something here it's it's I don't know how am I gonna write something here so it's difficult right so you need to have some option a widget which sits inside that and helps you type helps you add stuff and and that's what this particular plugin does so we we'll leave this page without saving because I don't want to mess up with my website uh, nevertheless let's get into pages so I spoke to you about the website the basic website and I also spoke to you about having subsections here so these subsections which are available these can be created within your website so what you need to do is you go to the pages option click on the pages option and add a new page now you need to think before you create a website you need to think through broad aspects of what your website needs to cover so it needs to cover about your company it needs to cover about the services you provide it needs to have few contact pages if you if you're available if there are any accreditations that you would like to talk about if there are awards that you would like to talk about so you need to think through the entire framework in your mind and then what you do is you go ahead and create each page one page for each of those so either you can choose to say that hey listen I just want to create a plain website and I'm done with just a single page you know just just talk about what you do that's about it you can also say no I want to get into a bit of a detail I want to talk about you know let's say if it's about us I want to talk in detail about what we do if it's services I want to get into details of each service that we provide you know if it's awards I want to get into details of each award that we have received so far so you can get into details or you can just have a single page so the themes that you download typically would have a single page you know and they are that's the whole purpose of it but if you want to customize it you can add a page here into add page and once you have added a page go to appearances and go to menus in menus when you click on menus you can design the way your page has needs to look so in my case all the pages I've added comes here and if I click on a particular page I can add that into my menu structure so the way I'd like my page to look is I would like the about page to come first then the services services page I would like to have sub pages within that each of the service item I can add a page here as well and then finally I'd like to have contact page and you need to to create all of these pages so let's just for the sake of understanding create one particular page because I'd like you to just understand the bits of creating one page so here I'm going to create a new page so what I'm gonna do is let's call it uh, hello world 
okay and this is a page I want to create and what you need to see is before you create the page uh, so you can obviously add widgets and you know before you add a widget you need to add a row you need to decide if the page is going to look 50 by 50 you know each side of you don't want any columns if you want a picture here you don't want text here you can do that you can even change the ratio here so let's say I want to change the ratio and make it um, 75 25 okay or 25 75 whatever I mean you can play around with this I'm not gonna get into details of all this but let's say you want to play around with this and you insert it here and let's say you want to add a picture so what you do is you go to widgets you add visual editor you go to widgets you add a visual editor and once you have added a visual editor you can write whatever you want to write XYZ say done go here here also I can write if I want to of course but I can also add media if I wanted to so let me just pick some picture out of the media let's say this picture and insert it here and say done <coughs> one important thing when you're creating a page is to say that the default length of the page will be full width sorry the width of the page so this is important otherwise your page is gonna look shrunken and once you're done with this you can go ahead and publish this page now it is unlikely that you'll see this page because we have not put this into the menu so you see it's not visible anywhere but this page is available for you so in your all pages it's available but you need to add this page into your menu for it to be visible in your site so what was the name of the phrase that we created yeah we created hello world right so let's go to appearance and go to menu and in menu you can go and click hello world and move it to the menu structure so if you click it here it gets added into the menu structure now you see hello world here now if I update it and say save menu I will be able to see it so let's say this is my website I'll just rerun this and here we see hello world see how simple it is I can see hello world sorry about the spelling I just wanted it to look and I can move it around so I, I want to say I want to move hello world as the first item so if I save my menu now if I go back to my my page and if I just refresh it hello world comes into the first area so you see it's very easy for you to create that hello world and here we click in hello world and you see that image that we created it's come here and the text we wrote it's come here obviously gave it a we gave it a 70 30 ratio so 70 percent of this page is text and 30 percent is image now i don't want to keep this particular page so i will remove it and i also will remove it from the pages so let me just save the menu go to all pages and let me remove hello world and thrash it so this is something I wanted to cover because this is something you would be using very extensively while you create a page now let's get into plugins and let's understand a few important plugins that you need um, one is something that we've already spoken about which is the visual editor plugin another one yet you would need is called contact form 7 it's one of the most common plugins used and the way you install a, a plugin is simply click on add new plugin you get the plugin page type the plugin that you want so in this case contact 7 search for that plugin so web 
WordPress the WordPress website will search and throw back all the plugins so here we see contact 7 in my case it's already installed if it was not installed I simply need to just click it I click it and it's not done then I need to then go ahead and activate it so once the plugin is installed I need to go so let's say just for the sake of understanding click this particular plugin I have no clue what it does but let's just try playing around with this so I'm going to install this plugin and I'm going to activate this plugin so once I do this the plugin gets activated and you know whatever it's supposed to do you know you can do it so <coughs> I don't want this plugin so I will go ahead and deactivate it and once I've deactivated I can delete this plugin and it will ask me yes or no if I want to delete this plugin so yes delete this file and data so if you're not taking a data you can delete it if you've taken a data you can delete it of course data backup so same thing with this one I had installed it previously I don't need it now I'm simply going to delete this particular plugin so another useful plugin is called the spacer plugin that you see here so what what spacer plugin does is that it adds so let's just delete this one as well so what the spacer plugin does is that it adds space to your uh, columns so you know you can sort of adjust your columns and width very nicely and you also have a maps plugin so this plugin is very useful if you want to have a map in your website uh, takes you into you know Google Maps so it's a Google Maps plugin I will not get into the details of plugin because I wanted to keep this particular session pretty simple uh, so now we've learned about creating a website we have learned about customization and also let's just learn a few things about copying pictures so it's pretty simple you you pretty much have to go and copy the picture so let's say I want to download a ship picture I go and type it in Google I see the pictures I open the image I right click it I save the image as and I'm done ensure you save the image as JPG and you can resize the image based on the earlier criteria we spoke about it's very simple I would suggest for all proprietary purposes always use your own image that you have created because it makes the site look more authentic but if you want to have some generic pictures you can just google it and download and fix it now let's also learn about logos so what you see here is the logo it tells you that this is a shipping company apart from the fact that this picture tells you what shipping and what you need to do is to create a logo you got to go to any of the logo, log logo maker sites so the one I use is called logo maker with a KR and it's very intuitive so let's just create a logo and I want to create a shipping logo so I'm gonna type anchor in the search bar and it gives me various options so let's say I like this particular option so I keep this here and I can add a text here so let's say anchor anchor tech or something like that and this is my logo and I can resize it it's very very simple I can keep it here I can keep it here I can keep it on top I can do whatever I want to with it I can change the colors so I click here and I basically move it around the color changes it's very easy I can do anything I want <coughs> and once and I can even change the style so this is another style 
clips and once I'm happy with my logo I simply crop it so here is the crop option as you see here in the right bottom of the application it actually gives you an automatic crop so if you like you're happy with this crop just go here and just say save logo it saves the logo automatically into your desktop and you save a PNG file once you have the PNG file all you need to do is just go to your customizable menu so in this case go to customizable menu okay and I'm going to open my header section sorry the appearance section general option so my logo is here you can see if I want to change it just go change here upload select a file it downloaded the file here is the file this is the logo uh, this is not sorry this is the logo that we had chosen open this logo simply choose the logo and there you go that's it it is very 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 easy uh, so I am gonna go back and choose my previous logo <coughs> So that's that's about the logo. Now we I'm not going to save any of these things because you know it's gonna mess up with my site. So I'm just going to leave this page without saving it. And I am now gonna talk about publishing the website. So once you're done with it, it's it's the website is quite active. So the moment you have the website, um, the WordPress file downloaded, you can start customizing and as you customize you can see that the website is getting created you know and it's it's published so you have the live option to publish it now once you have published the website and you've created all the posts I would say that you know I would like to see some performance about my website so I want to see how fast it runs I want to see who's visiting my website so on and so forth so what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about checking the speed of my website in the world of Google it's very easy so you simply type you know speed test I think it's called speed test website sorry it's called page speed insights and what you do is you type your website name it's a Google developers website and you type your website name and say analyze so it will go ahead and analyze and tell you if the page is loading fast and it will give you both mobile as well as desktop options of loading and you can choose you can change stuff here but honestly this is all techy stuff so there's not much you can do plus if you've used a theme the theme is going to sit on top of your website so it is going to slow down stuff so there's not much you can do but still it helps you understand the speed of your website if you need to especially reduce size of some images because images take a lot of time to load and that can be an issue so this is one of the options to check the speed of your website you can also check demographics so there is a there's a Google analytics website and this this is a this is a bit of a setup thing that you need to do in so you know as a business as a mobile option you need to set it up and once you set it up you know you can go and analyze your website you can say if the website is you know how many people are coming so it tells you about demographics of your website it, it, it does all sorts of things so you know in my website it tells me what's the speed of the website all of that stuff so let me just type shift I can see okay. 
so I'm going into Google Analytics. I just wanted to spend two minutes here because this this just helps you understand what's your user profile like. So it tells you what was the last session, how many users have come, what number of pages users have seen, you know, uh, a lot of stuff. It tells you from which countries the users have come, you know, it tells you so if my site's been seen by these users, it tells me that. You know, it's amazing. It's, it's just very nice. And it tells you, you even by city, it tells you. So I think it's a great thing. So if you like to install this, you can install this. There's a plugin available for this. And it's, it's pretty good. So that's pretty much about it. I would like to quickly re recap what we did right now. You bought the domain earlier, the hosting site, both of them. Today we learned about CMS systems and we also learned that installing WordPress is one of the easiest thing to do. We installed one of the themes, what we installed was called Parallax 1. You have other options as well. Sydney is a good one. Uh, you have several such. You have Zerif Life, right? Zerif, I always <laughs> misspell this. So it's Zerif Light and I don't know why it's it. Sorry. <coughs> These are some of the popular themes you can download download for free. And then we learned about customizing our themes. We learned about some of the cool plugins we like Contact Form 7. So we learned a lot. We we learned about copying pictures we learned about making logos you know logo maker was the website we use for that we published our site we also checked our website speed and you know we use google analytics to check the speed of our website we did a speed test so in all we created a website without using a single code in our website and that's what I was telling you that it is very simple to create a website and you can easily do it using one of the themes which are available for free I can get into each of this in detail if you'd like to but I thought for this particular session I would pretty much only cover the creation of a website using a free theme I hope you like this session if you have any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to put them in the comments column. I hope to see more of you. Thank you very much for spending your time and going through this entire session. I would like to really, really thank you again for that. Thank you. Goodbye.